Hey gang, Private Jack here. Welcome back to part six of my series on how to take an XNA model and convert it for use in Source Filmmaker. And we're currently using Blender to manipulate the file and create the uh, valve source model that uh, we require to compile the model into something that's usable in Source Filmmaker. Anyway, uh, when I left you off, we were manipulating the model. We got rid of the duplicate uh, vertices in the model. We were started working on the bone structure. Uh, one of the things I forgot to remind you to do before uh, when I closed off the last session was file, save the model. Blender is finicky. Blender will crash on you and if you don't have your model saved it may or may not uh, give you the ability to recover your file. So here we are. We've created, uh, we've gotten rid of most if not all of the unnecessary bones. Uh, we created uh, we renamed the hip bone to be the root pelvis bone. We extruded a bone off of that particular uh, pelvis bone and named it hip. Uh, and we find that it doesn't do anything. Going back into pose mode, rotate we find that it doesn't do anything. One of the reasons why it doesn't do anything is because it's not connected to anything other than the hip or the uh, pelvis. So one of the things that we have to do is we have to select the spine, go back into edit mode, and disconnect this from the pelvis. What we're going to do now is we're going to assign a new parent to this particular bone and it's going to be the root hip bone. So clicking in here and by typing in the name of the bone I can actually connect it to the root hip. Back into pose mode rotate. Now we've got some action. A little bit of a funky deform there, but that might be okay. All right. Cool. So that's looking all right. And the other thing is, is these thigh bones should not be off the pelvis, but they should be off the hip as well. So again, select those, go back into edit mode, and change this to root hip. There. Oops. Back in pose mode. Select the hips. Uh, maybe not. I don't think that's what we want that to do. Hmm. Trial and error. Now uh, let's put it back to the pelvis bone. Okay. 
Okay, so come back into edit mode. Change that back to pelvis. And that one too. Rotate. Oops. Close mode. Rotate. That's better. Yep. Needed to come off the pelvis. Okay. So, it looks pretty much like we've got the bones set up. Now, let's have a look here. Back in edit mode again. And what I want to do maybe is get into an ortho side on view. And I'm going to rotate this bone up into the head. So I'm going to press R. Uh, before I do that, rotation methods. These are the rotation pivot points for a particular item. You can rotate it based on where the 3D cursor is. And my 3D cursor right now is up in here. That's my 3D cursor right there. And what I want to do is I want to go uh, Shift S for my snap uh, menu again, and I'm going to move the cursor to the center. So if I select 3D cursor as my rotation mode, when I rotate this bone, what will happen is it will rotate based on where that 3D cursor is. If I select individual origin and I rotate the bone, it will probably rotate based on the base of the bone because that's usually where the origin is for the bone. If I select, actually, uh, let's go back here. If I have more than one bone selected, and I'm on individual origins, they will actually rotate based on where their origins are. You see that? Okay. If I select median point, it will select a point. If I have more than one bone selected, it will select a point somewhere in the middle between here and here, and that will become the rotation point. Next thing is, is if I select the active element and I rotate it, I'm still on a median because they're not connected bones. If these two bones were connected like this, see how that happens? See what happens there? I'm going to Undo this. There we go. Now, with one bone selected, if I select the medium point, it should be the center of the bone becomes the actual rotation point. If I select the active element, it should be the base. No, it isn't. It's the whole bone. However, if I come in here and I select the base of the bone, that becomes, that won't pivot. Okay. Hmm, learn something new. Anyway, okay, what I want to do is I want to rotate this based on the individual orion, or origins, which is this particular point right here. Rotate it up so that it comes into the head like that. Now if I go into pose mode and I rotate, I still have the rotation of the head the way I need it.
but the bone is buried in the, in the actual mesh. And it's more centered to where I need it to be. Okay, that's good. Now, bones. Ah, connected bones versus disconnected bones and that kind of thing. Let's see what happens. I'm going to select the toes. One of them here. And here's another neat thing. If the bones are symmetrical, that one and that one, if I come over here in edit mode and select X axis mirror, if I rotate one bone and they are symmetrical, uh, these are not symmetrical. What should happen is if these bones are symmetrical, if I move this bone, this bone should move at the same time. But what I'm seeing is that these bones are not symmetrical. Okay. Next thing we have to do is we have to go through and we have to determine rotation of the bones. Um, what the rotation is, is if the bone is rotated, what will happen is when you start uh, manipulating the bone and you get it into the source fiddle maker and you start using the rotation axis, the rotation of the, uh, the rotation axis will not be um, square the way it should be. So what we need to do is we need to go through and we need to fix the rotation of all the bones. So we'll start in the toes. This one here, if I come over here and look at the roll, it's rolled by 35.07%. Uh, next one is zero, this one is zero, this one is zero, this one is zero, this one is zero, zero, zero. Oh, it looks like they're all pretty much zero, with the exception of the toes. So we're going to fix the toes. Come on. The way you fix the rotation is by going in, by selecting a, bowl, uh, a, a bone. I wonder if it'll do two. Holding down the shift and pressing on the, um, no, got to be out of that first. So using the left, or the right mouse button, I select a bone. Come on. Then holding down the shift key and selecting another object. Come on. Uh, sorry, control the devil is going on here. There we go. <clears throat> Holding down the shift key and the left mouse button, I can select the next object. And what we're going to do is we're just going to push zero and see if they both know they don't. Zero roll, zero roll. Zero, 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 one, knuckle bone, zero, 
zero, zero, zero, zero, zero, zero, zero, Excellent. Okay. Looks like the bones are good. We're not going to worry about renaming them at this particular point. Um, one of the things about naming bones, if you name a bone and you use the format that's known by Source Filmmaker, these things will actually fall into proper groups like body, uh, legs, arms, fingers, that kind of thing. So if you use a format that's known by Source Filmmaker, you don't get that many unknown bones. Right now, I can see that this particular armature has 42 bones. Maximum bone count that you can have in a model is 128. for whatever reason if you have 128 bones and you try to compile it uh, the compiler will come back and tell you that you have too many bones what you have to do is actually uh, stick around 126 bones I found that out doing the uh, Xeno Queen okay so that's all right I think we're done with the armature for now Come back into object mode. And now what we're going to do is we are going to paint the model. File save. And I will come back with the next session on how to paint the model up. So at 17 minutes, uh, 18 minutes, I'm going to say, Private Jack, out till next time.